this is the install on a uh, 2012 Jeep JK. And this is basically the shifting operations with a automatic transmission. When you're shifting into high range, the rear axle, and this is the rear, rear axle control, this is the front axle control, you can shift into high range at any speed. Uh, transmission still in drive. You can basically give it some gas and let off the gas and shift it in. You're in four wheel drive. This has a live axle. It doesn't have locking hubs, so the front drive shaft's always turning. I can let off on the gas, pull back out into neutral, and it's basically in two-wheel drive. So basically, your two-wheel drive, let off the gas, shift it into four-wheel drive, keep going. So you get into wet roads, slip roads, or something like that, you need four-wheel drive or on-demand four-wheel drive, basically that's what it is. Um, you need to come back into two-wheel drive, Go ahead and pull it back out and you're ready to go okay so going into uh, low four-wheel drive is a little bit different story uh, the transmission really wants you to go almost to a complete stop uh, there's certain things in the computer that doesn't want you to basically uh, you know do the reduction without coming to a complete stop and that's the way the new process transfer case was and the atlas is even though it's, it's telling that the transmission is going to go into low range, it's still giving you the same reading. So what you need to do on, on that is you still want to be rolling forward because it is a synchronized gearbox. So you basically shift the transmission into neutral. You apply the brakes a little bit, but you're still rolling. As you start coming down to a, a slow roll, about a half mile an hour to a mile an hour, and put a little bit of pressure on it, apply the brakes slightly, and just put a little bit of force on the transmission or transfer case shift lever, as you get down to almost a half mile an hour, it'll pull right into, into low range. We're just into two wheel drive, low range in the rear axle, and I put it back into drive, and now we have low, low, four, or low two wheel drive, basically. At any time, I can now take the front axle and do the same thing I was doing in high four wheel drive, basically engage and disengage with the transmission and drive. So. Uh, basically push some gas in there, let off, and shift it out. We're doing a turn here, so we're, we're basically, uh, if I was in four-wheel drive or in a Rubicon, I'd be really bouncy as far as the steering, because I'm in four-wheel drive, the, the differentials would be uh, ratcheting the vehicle. Uh, nice thing about the Atlas, I can disengage the front axle, still in low range, and basically do a nice tight turn. It's real easy driving in, in four -wheel, or in the two wheel drive. Now I'm coming up to an obstacle. I basically give it just a, a little bump of gas and basically shift it into the uh, four wheel. Done with the obstacle, shift it back out. So real quick and easy. Um, you know, it's, Atlas is toted as having a front dig. Once you're synchronized into that low ratio, you can shift any handle in and out I'm now just front wheel drive on the Atlas. So I can basically shift it in and out. And it just letting up on the gas as I'm shifting is basically the uh, uh, way of doing the, the shifting on there. So it, it makes it real easy. Now, one thing I, I just mentioned, one thing that the Rubicons don't have or any Jeep ha doesn't have uh, until they have an Atlas is when you take a tight turn, if you're on a rock face or rock slab and you really don't need four wheel drive and you try turning, or even if you're on the street like what we're doing right now just doing this video you take a turn with it in full drive you get real bouncy and it's because the the differential uh the tires are turning at two different speeds basically so what that does is it basically your your front axle is turning and it's not allowing for the the slippage on there because you're on a hard surface so what's nice about the Atlas, and, and you're doing that all day long in the trail, and you do have certain surfaces that are, are like that on Rubicon or, or even in Moab a lot of times. What you can do on the Atlas is you take the front axle out, and we can do the same tight turn, and it's basically like driving on the street every day. It's easy slippage, no, no problem at all. You're not driving off that front axle, so uh, it makes it a real nice day on the trail because you're basically driving a two-wheel drive. 90% of the trails are, can probably be driven on two-wheel drive. Just when you get to the obstacles is when you need to put it in full drive. Being synchronized, you don't have to stop. You don't have to shift. You just basically bump the throttle a little bit 
and shift it into full drive and shift it out. It's that easy. And the nice thing about the Atlas, when you're done done for the day and you're getting ready to go home, you're still in low, you shift it, disengage the front axle, and we basically go ahead and, and say we're still in low range. We're up to 25, 30 miles an hour. We bump it into uh, neutral, high range, two wheel only, and we're ready to go. There's no uh, stopping, shifting it out of drive or, or out of uh, low range or anything. It's basically synchronized, ready to hit the hit the road and go on home.